When it comes to these epigenetic clocks, this is the number one weakness of these clocks, that we don't completely understand the molecular mechanism. And coming back to telomere length, that's a great advantage of telomere biology. We really understand very well what regulates telomere length, you know. Um, but yeah, with the epigenetic clocks, um, this is a very active area of research. Uh, top biologists and labs are uh, working on that very question, you know. And there are many theories. Um, some people think uh, stem cell um, um, biology plays an important role, and that's probably true for many tissues, you know. In certain ways it could measure um, aspects of uh, stem cells, for example, how often a stem cell divided. And the problem with that insight, uh, interpretation is that the epigenetic clocks work beautifully in neurons, you know, which um, uh, really don't rejuvenate over the lifespan, you know. By now we know that um, there is a U-shape <laughs> behavior. You, you don't want um, telomeres that are too short and you don't want to have telomeres that are too long. You know? And so um, that's the first statement. The second statement is telomere length per se is actually not a good biomarker for predicting onset of um, various diseases. Um, mo most diseases don't have a strong relationship with telomere length, in particularly uh, in, pa in particular, when it comes to predicting lifespan, you know, um, telomere length is actually a shockingly weak predictor of lifespan. For many years, people wrote articles where they claimed there is no relationship to lifespan. By now, the field has moved on to say, well, if you have very large data, you do see an, a relationship to lifespan. But um, if we compared um, telomere length, versus an epigenetic clock such as grim age when it comes to predicting lifespan, time to cancer, c time to coronary heart disease. I mean, there would be no comparison, you know. So um, in, in this sense, um, telomere length plays a very important role in, um, in certain disorders, you know, but it's just not a broad biomarker for aging. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Does, how does the the, the epigenetic clock, whether we're talking about the pheno age or DNA grim age, mm -hmm. um, relate to other biomarkers of aging. So mm -hmm. does it usually correlate, like if you have, you know, the, so there's immunosenescence, yes. um, which, you know, is associated with aging, yes. DNA damage, inflammation, there's mm -hmm. telomere length. Do yes. the, does it correlate typically, like in the same yes. direction? Yeah, it would. So uh, talking about grim age or pheno age, they would um, correlate in a consistent fashion. You know, they, um, so they would have a weak correlation with telomere length to give you a number correlation 0.1. <laughs> so it's actually a weak correlation, but yes, if you have a thousand people, you pick it up, you know. Um, in general, telomere biology is really um, a different hallmark of aging compared to epigenetic changes, you know. So diff um, they measure different aspects of aging, um, but yeah, there's consistency, you know.